We begin with a story full of mystery, magic, and the answer to a mother's prayer. It was early in the evening on May 25, 1999, Cameron. when Barbara Patry of Berlin, New Hampshire, discovered that Cameron. her three-year-old son, Cameron, was missing. Cameron likes to play with the dog, and the dog was gone. Cameron! So we figured that they had gone up in the woods. Cameron! When the dog returned without Cameron, Barbara knew her young son was in trouble. She immediately summoned the police. Yes, hello, 911. I think my little boy is lost in the woods. The New Hampshire State Police, along with the Fish and Game Department, arrived and began searching the area surrounding the Patry's home. Lieutenant Marty Garabedian was one of the officers in charge. We're going to have to start right here from the residence again. We set up a command center here at the residence. Then we started calling in some extra additional help. We began searching door to door in the neighborhood, and also buildings and backyards of residences, vehicles, anything we could possibly think a little boy would go into. As night fell, the search continued, but the chances of finding a small boy in the dark were nearly impossible, and by now, there were new concerns. We did have a thunder shower come through and the temperature dropped down to about 42 degrees. And I started getting concerned that he may be down and uh, possibly unconscious if, if uh, you know, hypothermia had set into that stage. They're gonna get up at about four o'clock in the morning and they'll gas the helicopter up. And Once up night fell, I night thought night. that we were never gonna see him again. Once they get here, I think they'll find him uh, shortly thereafter. The state troopers that were there kept telling me, don't worry, he's fine. But it was freezing cold and, I mean, I was worried sick. We intend to regroup and reinitialize the search from the youngster's house. Early the next morning, a general appeal for volunteers brought hundreds of townspeople to the area. Cameron had been missing for over 12 hours. They will be searching uh, in every little crevice, around every house, in every vehicle that they come upon, in hopes that uh, we may find this child. But all their efforts couldn't produce a single clue to the missing child's whereabouts. Cameron's mother was beginning to lose hope. I know this is upsetting to you. I We're said, running out of time. I kept contact. telling the police that we needed to find him, we needed to find him, and I think I had given up. It's okay, Barbara, it's okay. <gasps> okay, okay. I thought he was gone. And in local news, police in Berlin are still searching for three-year-old Cameron Patton. And then, while driving to a nearby road construction job, Melody Nunn picked up the report. All I heard was that a three-year-old boy had been lost overnight. It was like something physically took hold of me. I could barely breathe and had a need to try and help somehow. Melody is a Native American a descendant of both the Mi'kmaq and Abenaki tribes. And she knew from her heritage that she shouldn't ignore such a strong reaction. I just had a need to ask for this child to be helped. And my native way, I offered a prayer with tobacco. And when you offer tobacco, you speak through your good ancestors to the Creator. You ask for what you need. Let's go. Let's 
be too thrilled with my good relations. I asked for safe return of the child and strength for myself to help. And at that point, I still didn't know what my role would be. But out on the road, thoughts of the little boy wouldn't go away, and Melody suddenly remembered another native tradition, dowsing. My own grandfather doused and found water on his farm. And in the past, I'd had some success with dowsing, and it struck me that maybe I could help this way. Hey, I wonder if that'll work. I bet I can make some rods out of this. Dowsing is the art of seeking answers through the use of divining rods. When these rods are manipulated by someone with the knowledge and power to interpret them, it can produce unexpected results. Luke, you said you had a map? Luke Couture also worked at the construction site with Melody. She was dowsing over a small roadway map, and I was pretty amazed because it was pointing to a sea on the map, and the sea was for Cascade. I said, I don't think this is going to work. And another co-worker said, why not? And I said, it's the wrong place. The newscast said Berlin. Well, that's where the little boy lives on Cascade Hill. Who lives on Cascade Hill? Yeah. You know, this map isn't to the proper scale. They have Luke really good maps up at the suggested that we go to the forestry department where they would have topographical maps. And I was all for it, anything to pinpoint and help. If the dowsing rods had correctly pointed to the boy's neighborhood on the first attempt, perhaps more detailed maps would reveal his exact location. The maps are over here. We went into the visitor center and they had maps that were out in the open for people to look at and use. Is that where it is? She asked me if I would hold it for her and she started to do her stuff. Show me the location of the missing child. She closed her eyes and put her head down. Tell me when they cross. You want me to mark it? Yeah, I'll we'll mark it. Again and again, the divining rods marked the same spot. Even when the map was turned around, the answer remained unchanged. For this divining rod to cross in that same location four or five times, there's something that we couldn't explain what it was, it was happening. Same location. <sighs> okay, I'm gonna go get a copy. Okay. There was no question in my mind that I was gonna go look for the boy. Luke took a copy of the map and headed off to join the search. Although the information he was holding might seem fantastic, Luke was determined to present it to the authorities. But would they believe him? In my mind, I thought they were going to think I was crazy. That's right, so you've got to get the officers. Excuse me, guys, should I have a minute of your time? But I knew that if they weren't going to go for it, I was going to go for it myself. There's this woman, and she knows how to do dowsing, and she keeps finding the same location on the map every time. They didn't say a word the whole time I talked to them. No. At first, Sergeant Robert Bryant was skeptical. There had been a lot of calls already from people who claimed to have premonitions about where the boy was. However, looking at the map certainly was within the realm of possibilities. Great. And I said, you know, just give me the coordinates off the map and I'll plug it into my uh, GPS unit and I'll go. Sergeant Bryant entered the map coordinates into his GPS tracking unit, a device that uses satellites to help navigate in the wilderness. They then set off in search of Cameron, hoping that if they did find him, they wouldn't be too late. The biggest concern that I had was the boy being exposed to the elements. I don't think anybody that was out there for more than a day or two could survive being out there. The train that we first got into was a fairly open area. But then as we continued to walk further, it got thicker and thicker. 
My heart kind of sank, frankly, as I was walking through this stuff, because if he's in this stuff, I'm going to have to step on him to find him, because a three-year-old generally is not going to call out for help. They're going to be afraid of you, and they're going to keep quiet. So I'm walking up this knoll, and right in front of me is this little kid. I can remember now blinking my eyes and doing a double take, because I really thought my mind was playing tricks on me at the time. Cameron! Cameron! What you doing? Cold. You okay? You cold? He was wet yeah. and cold. You? You and he had a lot of bug bites on him and scratches. Just happened to have one of those. I could tell just by the, you know, the expression on his face that he was just happy to see anybody. So I asked him if uh, he wanted to go see his mommy and daddy, and he lip tremble and he said yes and uh, said okay we're, we're gonna take you there after being stranded alone for 20 hours Cameron Patry was carried out of the woods by Luke Couture and moments later reunited with his mother. I am just overwhelmed with joy. I can't even, I, I was shot in the dark. They kept telling me it's fine, like finding a needle in a haystack and they found my needle. It wasn't long before Luke gave Melody the amazing news. Melody, I thought that he'd been found on the search line and my inner thought was, I'm so glad nobody listened to me. Oh, you did it! You found him! You're mad! When I heard that, it was an incredible feeling, and the tears just started to pour down my cheeks. I was so relieved. You did it! I can't believe it. I can't believe it. It was pretty amazing that everything kind of fell into place. Mom and Dad. The chances of actually, actually going out to a point like that and finding somebody is like, find a needle in a haystack you know if you if you actually do your math it's it is a miracle today melody frequently visits Cameron to share the wondrous stories of her native culture but for Barbara Patry it was melody's dowsing ability that proved to be the most wondrous miracle of all I had never even heard of dowsing or anything like that and now I certainly believe it because it, he was right on the spot that she pointed to. Your whole life, you always want to matter. And on that day and time, I was fortunate to have a gift that helped a little boy come home. 